Okay, continue on where I was gonna say I was gonna continue probably doing this way. Now this one has a certain direction for the air filter to flow. Uh, if you look at this arrow here, it only has one passage, meaning it's gonna go flow this way, but it's not gonna let ventilation come back out this way. So before what was was even open. It was open on this end, there was nothing there. So I don't know it worked before without it, so this must have been kept closed or blocked here. Uh, now what does it prevents the ventilation from the thing to get back into the valve covers, but the valve covers ventilation can actually come up go there now with these flow is they do have a direction you have to note uh, which one is what let's see what this one says I use the K&N filter because they're lighter uh, especially right here for the fuel filter this one this is really light I do have the NCY one as well but it's a little heavier for this application because if you look at it I want it slanted so gravity just allows it to free flow from the fuel tank all the way to the carburetor inlet. Now the reason why I put a valve switch here is recommended because when you change out your filter, you know, you wanna be able to shut off your fuel right at the source. That way you can shut it off, don't have to worry about clamping the fuel lines if you don't have a, one of the shut off valves like this or if you don't have a petcock. Uh, and also petcocks get a little faulty sometimes after a few, few years or so. So that's why I figure I just avoid it, especially when you're jetting a new carb and stuff like that, you need to get fuel into it quickly. And you know, if you're troubleshooting like vacuum leaks and stuff like that, it might not properly give you the suction it needs to open up the fuel line. So I just bypass the whole thing. The only thing is you have to manually make sure you turn it off after usage, uh, pretty much during the day. You don't have to turn it off between stops or anything like that. So this is it, you can hear it click. And this also has an arrow indicating which way it goes. You can see here my camera in here oh, let's see here I can get for this angle better there you go you can brighten up a little bit oh yeah it's not letting me brighten too much there we go you see the arrow barely there's number five right there just below number five there's an arrow so it goes fuel line from here and it goes to uh, the NCY 30 millimeter carburetor intake manifold. And then I forgot to mention also the drain bolts. The drain bolts is right there. If you look, at it, I put it clear also, but I put a little protector uh, springs here. I just took it from the old one. And that way it prevents the heat from actually burning the hose. You wanna keep the, the hose mainly as possible away from the engine heat. The crankcase usually gets really hot, but all the plastic and stuff like that, uh, you can go over like this. And there's the automatic choke. And again, it's pretty much tucked right here with all the harnesses is. So it's very simple. A lot of people say they have a hard time putting the Naruku intake manifold because of this bar here and the Zenon scooter. This is what the scooter is, is a Zenon. See it from far. And what it is, is um, what I did was I took out the whole stud and intake manifold. I, I mean, I took out the whole intake manifold studs, including the bolts and everything, it all came off. And I squeezed this all the way fully until it was blocked uh, from here onto the intake manifold. I, I compressed it much as I can all the way fully through it. And then what I did was I fit it in first. And there's a little thing right here that hits the bushing of the crankcase, the end of the bottom here. This would not actually even go inside if I did not remove the studs. So what I did was I removed the studs first. I footed it in this one first, make sure it goes underneath the bushing or besides it. And then I was able to align the intake manifold and see that the holes actually were properly in place. And then I went ahead and put the, the whole acorn and the cylinder stud. I believe these are six millimeter by 30 intake studs. Now, there, since these have actually a pretty thick spacer already built into it, so less point of uh, vacuum leaks, all you need is uh, pretty much an intake manifold gaskets or like a little thin paper gasket underneath that and that's it because the o-ring will actually this has the uh, you know o-ring already on there it's 24 millimeter it can actually already clamp down now if you're putting this on a 50 cc scooter there is a ncy intake manifold spacer that's made to tap it from a 24 and funnel it in cleanly to a 21 millimeter so you can use it for your big bore kit for your um uh, gy6 uh, 50 cc or uh, 139 qmb um, that will probably get to like 88 cc, not which is the carburetor chain, but with the big board kit as well. So that's pretty much it on the vacuum hose. Again, I apologize for cutting this to two parts. I could have just taped it together. So this is pretty much how it's laid out. If I forgot anything, let me know. And 
a lot of times people don't know that this is pretty much where you actually drain your float bowl. Uh, they call it like a drain hose or, you know, this right here. You can turn this a little bit. Sometimes you can actually fine tune this uh, to get the, the drain. The drain uh, bolt is really, really tucked in there. So for me to actually get into the drain bolt, you can see it's all the way right on there. This plastic is covering it as well as the, the bike frame. I won't be able to get into it. So I'll have to actually remove this whole thing again. If the studs does not come off when I take out the acorn, what you do is, again, use um, either a stud remover or just take a, two of the smaller bolts, clamp them together tight and do that little uh, two bolt trick. And then you can be able to take out the studs. It's gonna be a little harder. But then again, I got a lot of space here from the acorn. So that's a pretty much it. A lot of new things I want to share with you today. What we're going to do is we're not going to put that uh, filter. If, uh, if I wanted to, I could have ran this again, this clear tubing, the T off right here. I could have teed it off and reroute it onto my paper k and filter and have the, you know, the, the fuel vapors come right back through it. I took out the EGR because again, after a few years, those things get really faulty and they're really ugly looking. Get a little big, huge bar brace right here and everything. You can see that most of the big bore kit for performance, they don't have EGR, even though this fan shroud is cut for EGR. Um, the only difference with the fan shroud, again, it won't fit unless you do a little trimming, but I didn't figure I have too much anyway because it was able to lock in one at a time. With intake manifold, it kind of forced it to clamp on a little bit but not very securely if you were to modify a little bit. But other than that, it works just beautifully. Uh, so a lot of new things we've done to it. Uh, in addition to intake manifold, the NCY 30 millimeter carburetor and the k and air filter, we installed the NCY shocks, which I'm very proud of. I, these, these are like 13 inches or 13 and a quarter eye to eye. Eye to eye meaning it's measured from one bolt here to the other bolt there. Very beautiful. There's two of them that comes in a set. And the product description and link will be on the bottom of this video. We installed the Benjing high torque starter motor. And we just used pretty much our old wire harness from it that had a ground and everything. That way we can actually just tap into it. If I trace it, you can see the wire harness coming up here. Goes here. And there it is. It's just plugged right into, plug into right into that set right there. So that wasn't hard to do. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this fuse line with a nicer fuse. Uh, Cause these are like the old fuse, you know, little glass fuse. They're not the flat kind. Let's see if I can crank it open so you can see it. Let me set this down. Okay. Get a view of it. We're in California. It's winter time here. Just, you can see here the fuse here. Or actually there's even a spare fuse right there too. So it's pretty cool. I might do that afterward, after I put everything in and it doesn't look that good, I can go ahead and just break this off and solder it. And we brought ourselves some, a lot of, you know, heat shrink tubes. You know, splicer connector. I could probably use these for something else. And then, uh, these are, uh, this is the horn that we installed here. The A horn. That was easy to install too, especially with the wire harness setup. The wire harness is made so much easier. This is like the little wire harness. It's like almost plug and play. So you can see there, we just took out the wire uh, from our old horn. Simple. It connects it. Let me see if I can get a resolution on this. See there? We just took it from the old horn and just rerouted and wired it. So here's the Cybran horn. Nautilus. Sibel, Sibel, sorry. Sibel horn. It's gonna be much louder. You can see how it is. And we just use the same mounting uh, bracket that it had. We just put a, our own bolts in there a little bit longer so it can fit in there. You can see there, that's where the bolt is. So very cool, very easy to install. This Y harness was sold additionally, uh, separately. Uh, and it came with a relay and everything. So this was actually the wires that came to the old horn. And that's all we did was we tap this was the wire that came from the old horn. Sorry, you didn't see it yet. And what we did was just we just tapped into the, the wire harness kit that came with it. And that was it. And we just mounted this in. And these things were just plug and play, you know. It shows you right there, one's positive, one's negative. So you can't cross-reference them that hard like that. So that's the Sybil Nautilus horn. It's going to be the one of the loudest uh, air horn. 
and because most scooters are beep beep they're not that loud and for safety you want to make sure you get louder the rectifier this is your uh, battery solenoid to transfer power to your um, starter and then this is your coil wire here which I'm excited we're going to be replacing this as well as the DC CDI we're going to unplug that I'm going to show you how we do it and we're going to replace it with the Benjing high tor uh, Benjing CDI unrestricted uh, eliminator so and then we're going to get rid of this old uh, from the coil wires here you can see how the coil wires are run there you go I can just kind of pull it out I might have to wiggle it oh there we go and we also already upgraded an NGK Neuranium spark plug and again all these are product are going to be in the description and you can see here this is the coil right here, right here. we're going to remove this whole unit out and uh, we're going to we're going to close these lid up and uh, on the DC one the power it's the black one I know it's normally you would think power is red but sometimes I guess Chinese wiring they don't really care what color is what they just kind of see what's available so yeah so this is your 12 volt positive battery right here and then you're gonna need a ground wire which is the green and this is the word the pickup wire for your stator this is the blue wire that's gonna tap into right here it's gonna tap into the black and yellow wire now on uh, AC one it might be a little different your pickup stator wire where the magnet comes rolling to your stator uh, that's pretty much your pickup stator wire and you need to tap into that with the uh, Benjing one it's gonna be a blue wire in the Benjing but this could be possibly blue and black maybe so you want to double check with that one but this very simple install there's only three wires from the Benjing in fact here let me go ahead and bring it out that way I can show you okay one second here I'm gonna go and get the Benjing one all right here's the Benjing uh, CDI uh, rev eliminator here we go it also has a built-in advanced timing I believe so it's a very expensive unit but it's pretty much worth every penny it will increase the horsepower and go ahead and tap into this one you can see here what we did was um, this is the one that came with it I don't think I really care for it too much I mean it's nice if you don't have any other substitute but I prefer to go with NGK one so the NGK one was an extra add-on uh, we add for it so what we're gonna do is it, the NGK one comes with two rubber pieces uh, as well and what you do is see these things right here they have a little uh, sort of like a connector to it you know it's like a little sharp uh, thing that you can actually force it into the hose let me show you open a new one that way you can see it so here's a untouched one here's how it comes in and I'll show you the wiring configuration on it in just a second here so this is what it looks like I'm gonna use my feet a little bit caveman style okay so this is how it comes in brand new you can see here the wires it's a solid piece of metal in there conductor or copper there you go you can see it now there we go and what you do is when you get this where you want it you would go ahead and take this off that way you can see it see there the little metal screw you would go and cut it the length you want. I think this is a perfect length. You shouldn't have to cut it. You could just wind it up like this one. See how long this is? I'm probably going to go ahead and when I wire it here, I'm going to measure the length that there need to be. I'll trim it. You can cut this as length as you want to. I wouldn't go all the way as far as the yellow though. Maybe just, you know, a you know, centimeter or so, wherever, or inch the most. And see where you really need it to. And then what you do is you just take this and you screw it in there. Screw it in securely. And that's what you have uh, just like your NGK one right here. So, oh boy, it's like after Christmas, I feel like I'm sitting down at Christmas again. So this is it, this is how the NGK one looks like. And the cover here for the NGK one, uh, a lot of people get confused. They think this goes pretty much on the side of the fatter spark plug and this is where the end of the spark plug goes, but it doesn't actually. It covers and protects the insulation of your, of your um, insert here. So what we'll do is we'll put it in there. Let me see if I can go and get this on the stand for you. That way you can see it. Let's see if I can even aim it at the spark plug. Yeah, we got a new tripod here. That should be a little bit more helpful. There we go. Can't really see it. Okay, let me see if I could just try to. There we go. That's where the spark plug is. You see that's NGK one. Okay, so what you do is you'll take this. 
kind of hard to get with one hand, but I'll do my best. And you just go in, you put it here to protect it, protect insulation of it. So, you know, a little bit water resistant won't get directly into it as much as possible. It's not waterproof, but water resistant. And let's see if I can do it one hand. There you go. All right, just fit all in there so you can. And then once you actually force it in there, there if you can look at it, let me see if I can zoom in. There's a little clip. That clip right there pretty much connects to the little, either, it could be either um, a cap tip terminal or like one of those kind of like, this one's not a cap tip terminal, you can see it. There's threads, that means it's a threaded terminal, which it doesn't really matter. It's gonna clip onto eventually and it catches onto that little, there's a little piece of wire that hooks onto it and you can hear it clip when you actually snap it. Now I just wanna show you. Here, let me go and snap it, that way you can hear it. Okay, here we go. What we're gonna do is gonna snap it and you can hear it click, okay? One, two, three. There you go, see that? Um, it looked like a click, but it went, it went click, click, click. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is, you see these wires here? And all these wires here, let me go face it a nice way. Okay, these are the wires I was telling you about here. It's very simple, if you really don't wanna mess with the positive and negative wires on your DCI, you wanna unplug it though, you definitely don't need two plugged in. Uh, so what you wanna do is you wanna direct this, to your positive DC, and this is to your ground or negative, um, you know, anywhere, uh, pretty much negative, that you can find, you know, sometimes you can get even get it from your valve covers. But you definitely, if you want to, you can tap it here, I'll show you how exactly, which wires from a DC CDI. This one can be made to be universal, you can use it for AC, uh, fire stator, or you can use it for a DC. And fortunately, fortunately, I do have a DC one. You can see how bigger this uh, old DC CDI is. Let me remove this. That way you can see it right off the bat. Okay, it's removed. It's held by some kind of plastic or rubber belt. And let me go ahead and put that to the ground. Okay, you can see here, this is very much what it looks like. What you're gonna do is, again, like I said, normally red is or indicating positive, but this actually, this one single one by itself on a DC CDI now, it's a positive wire. So you're gonna take your red wire, I'm gonna go and try to associate here. You're gonna take your red wire and tap to this wire right here. So your red wire from your Benjing taps into the black single black wire here. And then for your blue wire, this one's gonna be the tricky one. You gotta find out which one's coming from your stator pickup, which the stator pickup on a DC, it might not be a standard color code, but for sure we know it's gonna be the yellow and black wire. The yellow and black wire is going pretty much for your blue wire. This is your pickup coil. And then for your black wire here, which is common, either black or, well, in this case, we don't can't associate with that one. Most likely it could be black or green. So this is gonna go into your ground wire, your uh, green wire right here. So the black goes into the green wire, the blue again goes into your um, uh, yellow and black, and then the red wire, and tap into this one single one. Now you're gonna pull this all out, of course. A lot of people, what they do is, um, a good friend of mine, Anthony Myers, one of our customers here, he was very creative. He bought a pretty much one of those cheap, cheaper CDI. He just pretty much took the wire harness from it because it had an external wire harness that will hook up just as a replacement of this one. And he was able to map the colors or the wires or find out where this, uh, the positive and negative were and then also find out where the stator pickup wire were. And he was able to make a wire harness for it and he was able to utilize it and actually uh, just plug and play it. So he did the same thing at uh, the harness here for the the Sybil uh, Nellis horn. He was able to do that the same way it did here for, for me here. See, it also has a built-in fuse to stable horn. Again, that's just regarding the stable horn, but that's it. That's how you hook up the Banjing uh, uh, CDI unit. So again, just find a positive negative and then the blue wire is gonna be your pickup coil. You're gonna need to find out where that pickup coil is. If you were to trace it all the way to your stator, you could do that too, and just find out what color that stator wire is. You know where that wire that hooks up to your magnet is, where it rotates? One of those wires are your pickup coil wires. If you could tap into this one right here, you're done. And I believe this might also be where your, if you look at, see this one? This one also has that black and yellow. This is actually uh, your spark plug ignition coil which we're not gonna use because it has a built-in one right here. 
the Benjing CDI one, but you can, you can actually almost tap into this one too. See the green wire here? That's pretty much your negative ground wire. And then this one is actually your pickup wire here from your, um, the coil wires, ignition coil wire. And then you just find your red positive one, which is right here. This is your red positive one. You can tap it right here if you want to, because this is a solenoid. What it does is a starter solenoid. It's like a switch or a relay that when your ignition is turned on, it's gonna pretty much transfer DC power onto the other terminal, which then powers your starter motor. So you can see how your starter motor is run and taps into it. And then it goes right into the starter motor right there. And then that turns the crankcase, which turns everything, the combustion, the gas, and then turns your CVT. Uh, which actuates your rear wheel and that's how you go forward <laughs> so that's in a nutshell right there uh so that's it that's kind of overview what we got oh another thing we did also we added a new exhaust system which i'm kind of excited about this is a carbon fiber one it's so light that we don't even need something to hold it just the two studs right there is actually suitable if you go underneath it you can see it see that right there that's all we pretty much need it just hold it because where it comes here, it's so light, it's amazing. It's just so airy light that it doesn't even need that uh, holder for it. And it, looks, it still looks very clean, beautiful. It's a real carbon fiber. It's made by, I believe it's DMX that makes that one. You can see it also has a little separate silencer. Um, I'm not sure how to install it yet, but we have that component somewhere. And then I also have the Michelin uh, tires, City Grip on this. A lot of people put a little filter here for their uh, crankcase ventilation. Um, I just don't really see that much fluid coming out of it yet or any kind of vents, so I just left it open. Again, the same concept with having this open too as the ventilation as well for your fuel tank. So this is the Mich Michelin uh, City Grip. It's about 40, about 40 PSI. So we haven't changed the front yet because the fronts are still good. They're going to be good for a while. You can see the threads on it. It's a really good still. This is the Doro. And they'll tell you the PCI ratings here. On the scooter. Let's see if I can find this one in time. They'll tell you little small prints. Like right there. See, there we go. This says about 36, 36 PSI. Let's see if I can get a resolution of that. See there? 36. It says KMP something. And then we got 36 PSI. And then we also upgrade to the NCY uh, valve stems. These won't brittle up in the sun. You know, and when they go bad, you get leak of air and stuff like that. Also, let's see here. This the Michelin also will tell you uh, where their PCI rating is. They might have to turn the the wheel around somewhere else but it should be here might be blocked by there let's see nope okay there we go no that's not it somewhere here uh it's probably be blocked up all the timing let's see if i can lift this up and just kind of scoop my feet a little bit so let's see. there we go i uh, did, did a little turn on it it's tubeless of course we also have Oh. I know it said it cuz I had to fill it up. It might be blocked now by intake manifold, but yeah, it says something like the PSI on it. Uh, maybe the side could catch it easier. There you go. It's like right there. Let me go in and get a resolution on it. See, there it go. It's 41 PSI. Barely see 41. You can see it now. So that's the PSI on this one right here. And uh, we also added the, you know how the old one had those ugly, uh, what do you call those, those brake wires that comes in? Uh, you know, the, for the uh, hydraulic uh, disc brakes, uh, the fluid and stuff. So we, we upgraded this to the Hoka Dragon wire and such more better because there's no point of breaking anymore. It's just one solid. It has the bonjo bolts here. It has a little screw into the bonjo bolt so it's separated. So you can actually take it apart, the bonjo bolts and this. It also has a great insulation, which you have to force this, this whole tube in once you install it. And you can see how it's wrapped around. 
it's a one piece it doesn't have multiple metal to you know metal to wire connection like the other one had before it's a one piece wire and it goes straight snakes over a little excessive but we're going to go ahead and be able to wind it neatly maybe pretty much hide it in our front frame and it goes right into there now we'll have to bleed the fuel lines a little bit and then this one right here is we did another one for the front which is shorter is the hoka one i believe this is 110 and this one might be 240 millimeters so 110 millimeter for the front uh, hydraulic brakes and then 240 millimeters for the length of it i believe is for the um the rear one so you can see here and it was always bleeding where the connection broke where the bonjo bolts were or it was always leaking and making like a harsh you know brake fluid which brake fluid you know eats up paint it's a great way to clean things if you don't care for the paint it takes everything out see there you go and then the bonjo bolts there's a little dash here that's made for the bonjo bolt metal connection to have a place for where it should be direct to facing so there we go that was it right there so you can see here so a lot of cool new things we're going to add on to this bike after everything's said and done and i'm looking forward to sharing it with you and we're going to be able to put the fluid in possibly today uh, we already got the gas tank ready for it we used a premium chevron with tektron the highest grade they're not that expensive because gas is not that expensive to fill up your scooter you're saving gas right there already uh, we got the NCY, as you know, already inside here as well. Um, I, uh, Anthony Myers did a great job. He put the Banjing uh, five-star uh, clutch bell in there. It looks super nice, especially if he decides to actually open the CVT cover. He can show it off. But other than that, this is it. This is the final uh, wiring and uh, filling in the fuel lines and testing out everything before we start to put all the plastic covering in.